uh, hey everyone welcome back to the channel once again and to all those who liked and commented on my last video about the reverse at stake thank you i appreciate it all the people who viewed the short video i did on the reverse here at stake thank you once again appreciate it now today's video it's still the weekend i'm still alone oh, out. but i'm still going to cook out for the holidays for well for the labor day holiday so, excuse me stumbled blah, blah, blah. okay there we go on the labor day holiday i'm still going to cook out and for it, I'm doing pork shoulders. And these are for my church tomorrow. Uh, last pork shoulder I did, I had a lot of comments, a lot of thank yous, but also a lot of comments of, I didn't get any. So I'm going to do up two pork shoulders for my church. I'm going to do it with a fellow church member. You know, she's helping me out. I'm helping her with coffee hours. It's going to be like a picnic slash coffee hour type thing. But this is also going to be an experiment. For me, it's my personal experiment. We got two pork shoulders, very nice. Great fat cap on both of them. Look great. Here's the experiment. On one, gonna have a mustard binder. Yeah, I haven't used a lot of binders. I've kind of gotten back into using them, but I'm gonna do a little test. On one, we're gonna have a mustard binder. On one, no binder. Just going to see, just to see, does it really make a difference? I've seen videos where it does, it doesn't, you know. So, hey, a little personal experiment for me. Now, we're going to slow smoke these. We're going to go for a long smoke. We're going to be doing it uh, first. I'm going to cross hatch the fat cap on both. Going to smoke them in my Traeger Pro 22. And it is going to be, like I say, it's going to be a long cook. I will use a smoker tube also to um, make that equal. You know, same pellets, of course. It's going to be in the Traeger Pro 22, both of them. But like I say, just going to see if there is a difference. Now, one is one, one of these is slightly larger than the other. That's not really a big deal. These were on sale at Schnook, so hey, I got them, got, a good, for, got them for a good price. Always important. Always get your meat at a good price, folks. But okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause, get these ready to uh, slather up with the, with the rub and everything. And I'll be right back one quick second. This is the rub I'm going to be using. It's an old uh, Corky's uh, bourbon rub barbecue uh, bottle. And what I'm doing is this is like a combination of what I had left the Corky's and some rendezvous and a little bit of the pensies. I love mixing the rubs together because it really makes really great flavors. So I'm using this today on both of them. So everything's going to be pretty much the same on these except one's gonna have a mustard binder one's not so hey let's get started all right we're back i got them out of the cryo bag here's both pork shoulders okay first we're gonna cross hatch each of them take your knife Go over the top, just like so. Look, really cut into, do the, really cut into that fat and a little bit of the meat. Then, and do it the other way. So, there we go. There we go. 
Let's do the other one. This helps the rub penetrate the meat, also the smoke. It helps it penetrate. Okay, that's good. I don't have to go too crazy. There we go. We got them both cross hatched. Set the knife aside. And I'm going to wipe off my gloves real quick with a big towel. There we go. Okay. First up, we're going to put the binder on this one. I'm pretty sure this is a fresh, yep it is, haven't opened it yet, on camera, you can see that this is mustard, and I'm being honest, this is mustard, yay. Just a little bits of fat off. Alright, shake it, we're gonna shake, 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 shake. Alright, now let's... Really, really apply that really well. I'll make sure I get a binder all over. Raise it up. Okay. Side. It's going to be messy. Nothing you can do about that. There we go. There we go. We got a nice coating of mustard binder everywhere now yes i'm washing my gloves off in the sink because <laughs> i don't want mustard on oh, no, and i don't want to waste my gloves too much because i only have a few left i have to order some more so quick rinse of the gloves quick wipe down with paper towel and then we're going to start applying the, the rub a little bit more paper towels Yay, on this. Okay, we're gonna be applying. Let's go ahead and put this aside. Clean off the bottle a little bit. Okay, there, that's done. Now, oh, not quite. Okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna be putting the rub on the non-binder shoulder first, because I don't want to cross-contaminate, so open that up. There we go. That's really... Now, the... it's like I said in one of my other videos about pork shoulder, you know, it does come wet enough in the cryo pack just for the... just for the rub to stick to the meat as is. At least I've never had any problems with it. Okay. Stand it up. Gotta really make sure. Get some rub. Get that rub a dub dub on everything. All the sides too. Sorry if that's a little bit off camera. Alright, let's see. Yep, the sides are next. Okay. Pat that in. One more side to go on this one. Okay. 
There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now to the mustard one. Really just, like I say, don't cheap out on your rub when you're doing barbecue. You need, you need it to help form your bark. And bark, like I said in one of my videos, that's barbecue candy, baby. You got to have it. Okay. Okay, just really, like I say, really just apply it. Don't skimp. Apply it great. Apply it liberally all over your meat. There you go. Mm. Other side, and then we'll do the bottom. Go. This method, though, I will say, this is a whole lot more of a mess using a binder. So that's one, but you know, hey, that's what. They invented dishwashers if we had a dishwasher for it, but we don't have one on the dishwasher in the house. Uh, okay. There we go, really. All over. Okay. Okay. All right, now. Reapply a little bit to the top here. Okay. That looks like that's good. There you go. Both of them are rubbed. I just want a little bit. Let's see. Take my gloves off here. Sorry for the delay. move this camera a little bit so I can try to get you both in the shot here all right I okay there we go yeah okay okay here's one with the binder rub stuck on there but yay the rub stuck on the uh, one without a binder also. So no major difference there at all. Done. Um, like I said, this is a little bit more messy. Um, this isn't. So that's one minus about the uh, using a binder is it is a little bit more messy. But all right, enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and cover these both with aluminum foil and then get the uh, Trigger Pro up, get it up to temp, then put these in and we'll get the smoker tube in after that. So I will see you then. Hey everyone, forgive the shadow from the camera. I got the Trigger preheated and we're about to put the shoulders in. This uh, is going to also be a test of something else. I've been heard you really can't trust the probes on the Traeger. Uh, so this is going to be a test. I got my temp spike here. I'm going to put this in one of the pork shoulders. And I'm also going to put in the uh, probe from the Traeger in it also. And see how close to temp it is. And I'm also going to be using one of the probes for the other pork shoulders. So let's get them on in. We got the uh, first one here. Got my smoker tube in. So let's get the first one. My 
10 spike here. This is the one, this poor shoulder is the one without the binder. Okay, that's gonna be the best way to do this, probably like this right here. Okay, close that up, and there's the, that. That was the one without the binder. This is the one with the binder. Okay, all right, there. All right. Now, I'm gonna put the probe in. Let me get my gloves off, then I'll put the probe, probe in. I may have to move my smoker tube a little bit. Got the smoke rolling. Okay. This one right here. Okay, this one is. Let's see, which one is this? Okay. It's probe two. It's going to get put right into this shoulder. Right about here. Nope, bone, bone. Right here then. There. There we go. That's that one. Here's probe two, one. And that one is going to go in this one right here. There we go. Now, okay, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot of room in there for a smoker tube and two things of meat, so I'm going to have to move the smoker tube. Just everything real quickly. Okay, let's see. Go back there. Go back there. Okay, there, there we go. Got here, looks like I got everything set up in there great. Now, I just wanna do a test on how accurate the probes are. Now the, the, the temp spike I have in there, really great with accuracy, fantastic with accuracy. I wanna see just exactly how accurate these, the other probes are. Unfortunately, I can't show the temp spike accuracy because it's, it's on my camera, it's on my phone. So we'll just have to take my word for it, please. But okay, let's, let's go ahead. 
Okay, I have, took my phone off here. So I have my, uh, sorry for the herky turkey. I have this set for 180. I'm gonna have that set for 180 for about two hours. But now we're gonna test the probe. Probe one, this is the uh, binder, 42 degrees. Probe two. 45. Okay. And then I'm going to look at what my uh, temp spike and see what it's saying. But now, okay. So, got smoke tube in. Hopefully it's still lit. It looks like, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's still lit. Okay. When I come out here, if it's not, if it hasn't burned down any, then I'll go ahead and relight it, put it back in. No big deal. But all right, I will see you guys in a little bit, in a couple hours, because I'm going to let this roll at uh, 180 for about uh, two, three hours, and I'll see you then. Hey everyone, I'm back. Uh, I may have put these on a little too early, so I had to put my Traeger down on smoke mode, lower the temp, because I want these to smoke for a long time. I don't need them until tomorrow, so... Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed I didn't put them on too early. If not, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the cooler, let them rest. Hopefully I'll be able to pull these off by about 6 or 7 in the morning with no problems. If it goes over a little 200, I'll be okay. But anyway, uh, I just checked my meter thermometer, my, meet, my uh, temp probe thermometer, excuse me, and it read about... Yeah, 88 and if you ch see check this let's go ahead and folks when I get down here if you check road two yeah actually I think the probes are Pretty, so far, it looks like the probes are being pretty, re, uh, for the Traeger, are being pretty reliable. Um, now, the one for probe one was saying it was like 77 degrees in total. Check that again real quick. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. 72. Okay. So, let's see. I got my temp probe here. Turn that sucker on. Let's go ahead and... Yep, it's about, about dead on. So, yeah. It seems like these are uh, pretty... The probes on these Traeger are pretty accurate. I like that. Now I know I can trust them a little bit better. My pellets are doing fine. I will show this. I did have to relight the smoke tube. It uh, completely went out. And smoke tubes are great if you want that extra punch of smoke on a pellet grill. But yeah, they're very hard to light. You have to like really hold. And I, this is what I really hold the torch and this is what I use. This is a hand torch. That's what I use to light up my smoke tube. You have to like really hold it on the pellets in the tube for a few minutes to really get them lit. But so far, so good. I've it's like 171 in there right now. Like I say, I put it all the way as low as I, the lowest I can go next is shut down mode. I don't want to shut it down. I already got the meat on there, so I have to let it go. But so far, it's doing great. Uh, I can't really tell a difference between them when it comes to, to bark formation or anything right now. It's still so early in the cook. But we're going to let this roll at uh, smoke mode for a while. Just let it go. And we will come back in a couple hours and uh, 
check the smoker tube, check the meat, check the temp. We'll come back. And But before I go, I do want to give a shout out once again to American Smoke. Great barbecue channel. The guy's an inspiration for me. Zach, you're wonderful. You're funny. And uh, I'll leave a link in the, in the description to his latest video which is using pickle juice to brine uh, beef ribs. They look like they came out great. So yeah, go, go check out his channel. Give the guy a like. Give the guy a subscribe. I mean, he, he knows his stuff. I've learned a lot from him. So go give him a check, check out when you get a chance. But anyway, time to let this keep going. Uh, we'll be back in about mm, two or three hours. See you then. Hey, everyone. It's been uh, a little about two hours now, a little bit more. Uh, things I've discovered, the probes that come with the Traeger are kind of accurate. The, um, the temp spike, the temp spike that I'm using, it's uh, that and the probe for the Traeger are pretty much reading uh, just exactly the same just about. So. I feel like you could trust the probes from the Traeger. Now, granted, always have a uh, another uh, temp uh, temp pro spike around or anything like this to uh, keep track of temp. So far, though, I okay things that have happened since the last time we we're on camera. I removed the smoker tube. I think it took it about burned about. A little, a little over halfway down. I thought I figured that was plenty of smoke, extra smoke. Uh, I bumped the temp up to the 180 mark, and yeah, the ambient temperature in here, according to the uh, temp, to the uh, temp spike that I have in that one poke shoulder on the no binder poke shoulder. It's uh, it's reading like 10 to 15 degrees lower than what it's showing on the Traeger. Uh, the Traeger is showing a 178. That's why I checked the test spike. It was like around 165, 170. So when you're when you're doing these cooks, just remember you know. Temperature on the Traeger, mm, yeah, fluctuates. Always keep uh, keep something else in there. Now I've heard a trick is use one of the probes and put it in the Traeger off to the side or something. That way you can get a more accurate reading. I haven't tried that, but it's something to think about. Let's check on our uh, shoulders. Okay. That is the one with the binder. It is looking good, great. Great bark forming. Really good bark forming. And here's the one without the binder. Still some really good bark. Uh, it's, they're neck and neck in color. So, so far, uh, difference that I can tell I mean not yet anyway like I said we got a way to go I am probably going to let these roll uh, for a while like I say I have the tip at 180 and it's going a little bit below that probably before I go to bed I'm going to bump it up to 220 maybe depending on what the temp is before I go to bed. I'm not going to bed for a couple more hours. I'm watching some episodes of Ultraman on Netflix. Yay. Uh, yeah, everything seems like it's going okay. Nice, slow cook. Just taking its time. Well, I'm going to check my pillows real quick. Pellets are okay. I So yeah, we will... Before I go to bed, we'll come out here and check it again and see how they are. And probably going to be another two or three hours. 
See you then. Hey everyone, I'm back. Things are going pretty well. Uh, a quick look on the inside. Bark starting to form from both of them. And like I say, I can't. Do you see a difference? Not really. Bark really forming up well. Let me check my pellets real quick. Let's take a look at those. Pellets seem to be fine. So yeah, I am about to call it a night and try to go get a little sleep. Um, yeah, it looks like it's cooking fine. I'm going to keep it at 180, according to the to the uh, spike. It's like 167 in there. But I'm hesitant to bump the temp up for it when I go to bed because I don't want these to overcook. So I'm just going to keep it there and probably going to set my alarm for like around 4 o'clock or so. That way I can then bump up the temp a little bit and see if uh, that way I can finish them off at a higher, you know, at a higher temperature. So yeah, we'll do that. It's so far, they're looking great, though. Uh, cooking fine. I was able to slow down the process. Like I said, I didn't want it to go so fast that uh, it'd be, be done before before uh, 8 o'clock. So everything should be fine. Yep. Yeah, everything. Sorry, I had to just my chimney over there but yeah I'm just gonna let it roll we'll go ahead and do a quick temp check on I'll go ahead and hold on a second I'm gonna release my, my phone off of here so forgive the jerk cam a little bit I'm not trying to make you sick folks okay let's check the probes now Probe one, 114. Probe two, 134. Okay. Yeah, that other, the shoulder without the binder, I think it sits on the side, that's where the heat is escaping to go through the stack. It's cooking faster than that one. I might go ahead real quickly off camera, switch places. So that way, slow down this one. And I don't want this one to overcook and get done before this one. So I'm probably just going to switch them around a little bit. So yeah, we will then, uh, I'll do that off camera. And I will see you guys in a few hours later. Hello everyone. It is about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Or afternoon, jeez, I'm tired. 5 o'clock in the morning. Around that time, we're gonna do a quick check, see how they look. Ooh, wow, look at that wonderful bark on those things. Oh, gosh. Look at that wonderful bark. Just amazing. Oh, yeah, looking good. Oh, yeah. Mmm, hot. <laughs> All right. Um,. Real quick, that was the one with the uh, binder, the one without the binder. No difference. <laughs> okay. We're going to check, check the tent here. Okay, 
it is the temp spike is saying the one over here is 160 the probes there are saying 170 so yeah it looks like maybe the probes are not that reliable but there's another way We'll go ahead and just do a quick. These are so this is saying one. About one sixty eight. So that's pretty actually pretty accurate. Okay, well, good, things are going great. About 160, 163, so that's good. Okay. It's getting close, so I'm gonna bump up the temp and bring these bad boys home. So, let's bump up to 250. Actually, I'm going to move up to 275. Uh, they hit the stall a while ago. And now I'm doing this just to go ahead and bump up the temp. To go ahead and... Just, if I didn't have to go to church, I would just let it keep going. I would just let it keep going, 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 going. But I've got to get ready for church here in about three hours. Three hours or so these have got to get done so I bumped up the temp uh, to get them to go ahead and just get them up to 200 degrees now I'm going to check my pellets oh yeah oh wow yeah I am going to go ahead and top off my pellets if I get off camera I'll show you guys There, yeah, they need to refill those pellets. So yeah, I'll do that. Top them off, make sure I keep uh, plenty of pellets in the hopper. That's the worst thing that could happen is you run out of pellets during a cook. Oh boy, That's, that would be nasty. So you don't want that. All right, though, but anyway, yeah, they are looking fantastic. The bark is looking wonderful. They look like they're going to be just awesome, so awesome. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Uh, and I will see you when it's time to t pull these off the, uh, the smoker. And I'm going to wrap them in butcher paper. I'm going to follow a friend of mine's advice. Wrap them in butcher paper, leach some of that grease out of the meat, and then I'm going to put them put them in their pan and put uh, loom foil over it so they can rest and then put them in the cooler. So I'll see you then. Hey everyone, well, they're about 205 degrees. They're ready to pull off. So first, get some butcher paper ready here. I'm going to wrap each of them in butcher paper. Sorry about that. There we go. All right. I'm going to put each of them in butcher paper. And I got my pans for them ready right here. Get my cooler already. A couple of towels in there. Here's the pans. Alright. Let's put the first pan up here. <laughs> I'm really not going to camera around. I apologize. Alright, there we go. Alright. 
Okay, let's get this thing in here first. Get my gloves on. These are gonna be super, super hot. Been sitting in the smoker all night since yesterday afternoon. They have taken on a lot of smoke. They both look good. And I cannot tell the difference between between the two I just know that the one on the I moved them back around so I know on the one on the right is the one without binder the one on the left is the one with binder so let's get the one without binder out first Spike off. Get this out. Oh my lord! It is just wonderful. This the one with outbinder. See, I'm putting a bunch of paper on there like my friend Carl Smith to try to reach some of the grease off of the uh, meat. Well, not everyone loves their pulled pork all greasy. I don't know if it's going to actually, actually make it healthy or anything, but... Hear me, folks? Okay. that one put my piece on there just to give it a safe side okay Into the cooler it goes. Okay, now let's get the other one out. Pan ready. Put your paper ready. This is the one with the binder. It is just, just like the other one. I really can't see a difference. I am gonna put save some so I can um, do a taste comparison. When we get back from church, I'll save it in a, yeah, save each of it in a baggie. There we go. Close my thing. And uh, shut down it goes. Yeah. Always remember to put your trigger in a second. Get away, guys. Ooh.
this is one of the longest cooks I've done on pulled pork. It was a super long cook. Like I said, I started about three o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. I had to really adjust the temp and everything, make sure they didn't get done in time. I mean, done too soon. There we go. This is great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and towel into the cooler. I'm going to put another put the pulled pork in here. I had to stack them on top of one another, but that's fine. They're going to get pulled anyway. I got another towel here to really help. Insulate everything. There we go. There we go. That's it. I will tell you the results of this when I get back. They look great. They are, they, they're about, I had to be real careful. They're about falling apart. Oh, these are going to be good. But I will take this glove off, load this into my van, and I will report how things go at the church see you guys then hey everyone i'm still at my church this is what's left of the pulled pork <laughs> this is the one that had the binder this is the one that didn't have a binder now in my post uh an american carnivores zach over at um american smoke he said he was able to tell which one had a binder and which one didn't by how dark the the uh, rub the uh, bark looked and everything. Me, I I didn't notice anything. But you know, okay, here's the bark that had a binder. It seems to be darker. The ring looks like a little bit more pronounced. Here's the one with no binder. Still kind of a dark ring, but the smoke ring on the inside is nowhere near as pronounced as the one with the binder. So, yeah, it is possible that the having a binder does promote a better smoke ring, a better bark. So it's something to keep in hand. But, you know, still, this was still really, really delicious. And just as juicy as the other one. So, you know, it's up, I guess it's just personal preference. With binder or no binder, pulled, pulled pork is amazing. But I guess since, you know, hey, bark will always be barbecue candy. Bark is always barbecue candy. Always. So, you guys have a good Labor Day, and I will see you again in the backyard, around the smoker, in the grill. See ya.